Here's the game plan. We are on a mission to play the best golf courses in the state of New Jersey. So far, we've checked off quite a few. And you know what? There are some that are still on the fence. We did get a couple of no's, but we're not giving up. And Pine Valley, guys, I think we might have a chance. I uh, put out a couple of feelers. I caught word that we are most likely going to be able to play it. But you got to stay tuned for that. The first hole here at Morris County is a really great opening hole in my opinion and actually believe it includes probably one of our neatest green complexes on the golf course. Uh, it's a short par four uh, with a hidden pot bunker on the right hand side. Most players will take less than driver. Uh, it only is about 330 yards from our back tee uh, but the drive uh, as long as you avoid that pot bunker on the right uh, and you can get it up that right hand side you can leave yourself with uh, for the longer hitters, a short pitch shot into a green that really is a Redan green that runs extremely hard right to left, and it's uh, with with it being a Redan, it's you know shots received uh, from the right side are, are normally shots that work out the best where they ride the slope and attack back to if the hole location is in the back left. Uh, shots that land on the left side of the green will track off the back side of the green. But it's just a great opening hole, slightly blind tee shot, but uh, it's certainly a birdie opportunity if you leave your tee shot in the right place. Okay, not bad. All right. Kept it above it. Yeah. All right, second hole, first par five. It's a short one, so good opportunity to score kind of right out of the gate here. And the one thing you'll see throughout the series is that the rough here in the Northeast is just punishing throughout the summer. It's thick, it's grabby. So you really need to stay in the fairway if you want to score well. And I saw that firsthand on this hole. Yeah, that's tasty. Tasty, crispy, delicious. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, that's some thick stuff. It is. Dude, you got a go for it shot. 180, but- This is so hilly, look at this. I can't even see the pin, but we, go, we do. But talk about a speed slot. You catch this hill and look at this. Yeah, you ran. Whew. What was that drive? Do you know? I'm going to tell you. You ready? Yeah, I want to know. I'm going to give you the number. 302. 302. No big deal. No big deal. Then I chunked the six iron. Yeah. That's all right. Not a bad layup, though. You're a wedge home. Below the hole. Below, below the, the hole. Below there. the hole. Below the hole. Just keep reminding myself. <laughs> Below the hole, below the hole, below the hole, below the hole. Not above the hole, not, not past the pin. <laughs> <laughs> Number three here at Morris County is our sh uh, short. It's the name of the hole. Uh, it's a Seth Rayner, uh, obviously template, uh, short par three. Uh, it only is about 115 yards from our member tees to a really incredibly, really neat green complex. We have a uh, thumbprint in the middle of the green, which is kind of a mini version of um, some thumbprints you may be seeing at like a Sleepy Hollow or some other Seth Rayner. Um, but you really have to play to the proper tier. Uh, obviously, we've got a tier in the back left. We have a tier in the back right and center, and then the thumbprint in the front. You got a chance at a par. Yep. <laughs> he said, Craig said, on this green, you have a chance at a par. Off the green, he said five. I missed the green. I'm going to try to prove Craig. You got to beat, beat Craig. I'm going to beat Craig right yeah. now. Okay. <laughs> so if you hit a shot that comes up short of the tier, uh, and if you have a wedge in your hand, it is going to spin off the green, uh, which leaves yourself, you know, very difficult up and down. I always joke it's it's a green that if you hit, you can make three. If you miss the green, you're probably going to make five. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I wanted it. Yeah. Oh, Craig, I wanted to par that one for you, buddy. So feeling a little bit of a heartbreak at this point being three over through the first three holes. But there's one thing you gotta realize. While we have the incredible fortune of doing what we're doing now, playing some of the best golf courses in New Jersey, sometimes I have to remind myself, that also means we're playing some of the hardest. This is a tough course, there's no denying it. And some of these rain or green complexes will get you in a lot of different ways. So at this point, just resetting expectations and just saying, try to play well where I can and not get too down on myself when I have a little bit of struggle around these greens because it is going to happen. Go. Get in. Oh, pull the pin. Now that 
is how a Texas wedge should be used. <laughs> They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. So the fifth hole, it's the last of this stretch that Craig told us where kind of the scoring holes out in this golf course. And we're looking at a short par four here. I think the smart play, because it can be a little bit tight, is probably to hit something less than driver. But hey, at this point, Mike and I, we're out here, we're having a good time. We both pulled driver, we figure let's just grip it and rip it. So far, five holes in, I gotta say, I am super impressed with this place. You know, hats off to the whole team here at Morris County. I mean, the greens, the fairways, the fescue, everything is lush, manicured perfectly. I mean, it's just a sight to see when you're out on some of these courses. And it's truly a treat. I mean, every square inch of this place is prestigious. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's really nothing bad to say about this place at all. Oh. Number six at Morris County is uh, is a really, really good short par four. The hole does turn a little bit right to left, and the fairway actually slopes left to right. So it plays a little bit of trickery on you because you need a shot to go up the left-hand side with the hole turning left. So if you do miss your shot to the right a little bit, it will kick down into the rough. And uh, the green itself is extremely small, surrounded by bunkers, um, front, left, right, and back. Um, and it's pretty much a tabletop green, so that slopes severely uh, right to left. So you need to come in with a shot that is just right of the hole um, and going long or short or left or right is trouble. The last state open we had here was in 1984. I think that played the hardest hole in the golf course in relation to par. Kick in. So the seventh hole, we got the full force of this long par four. And after playing a couple of short par fours, this one you really felt its length. Plus today, the member tees were all the way back with the back tees. So as you're looking at this tee shot, you see that massive hill in front of you. And you're thinking one thing, if I don't cover that hill, this is gonna be a long day. Anything that doesn't get over that hill with the tee shot is gonna roll way back and you really have no chance of getting on this green in two. So looking at it, pull driver, and just fire away at the top of that hill. Yep, cleared it. Not gonna like it, no. but I have it. Is it on that hill by your feet? Yeah, I could barely stand here. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Mike, look at it. That's all. Off the hill. Beauty. The thing I love about the seventh hole is definitely that punch ball green. There are so many approach shots where you cannot see the green that it certainly helps to have something that's a little bit more forgiving. But what I tell you is not forgiving about this particular punch ball is all of the bunkering that line the outside of it. It's not just a smooth hill and you can hit it long in other directions and have it roll down onto the green. Sure, you'll get a bit of that around the edges, but you end up in one of those bunkers, you're gonna end up with a tricky little up and down. Well, I'm really excited to be here and talk about Morris County Golf Club and its interesting founding. It was run exclusively and started by women at a time 26 years before women were able to vote in national elections. The woman behind it all was Miss Nina Howland. She and a group of her wealthy friends met and decided that they wanted to keep up with their friends who were playing golf. Pretty quickly they organized and were able to put together a board and lease property. Two months later in the middle of June, they had their first tournament going with just seven holes. The course started out very small, very rustic. There were sheep that were grazing in the, in the meadows and there were stone fences. They started out and had a very successful club with more than 400 members after about a year. Nah, pajamas. Number nine at Morris County, I think is our most difficult par four on the golf course. It's um, 450 yards from the back tees and it's a pretty hard dog leg uh, left to right. Fairway off the tee, you wanna keep your tee shot left center. A lot of players, you know, from the tee, it entices you to maybe cut off a little bit on the right hand side, but it's, uh, it's a little bit further carry than many think and you end up in the right rough. So again, tee shot up the left center to a severely raised uphill second shot uh, to a double plateau green. We have a tier at the bottom and then two tiers at the top with a center hole location in between the two tiers. 
The second shot probably plays about 10 yards uphill, and you do not want to come up short because it will come about 50 yards off the front of the green. Uh, so long par four, typically coming in with a mid iron uh, to a very difficult uphill raised green. Now before we went out, Craig was telling us about this halfway house that just built like seven days ago. Um, and he was raving about it because the old one, there was like a shack and it didn't even have air conditioning, but this one is brand new. And he said, you gotta try the chicken sandwich when you get out there. So we were all stoked and excited. I mean, we got a few more holes, but I, I could sense it, I need it. I'm craving that chicken sandwich. We got a few more holes to go. I cannot wait to try this thing. They did it. We woo. Now we gotta name it. I'm liking the stick filet. Stick filet. <laughs> Oh, uh, stick filet. The stick filet. Bengals. Good stuff. You want to recharge after that or what? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to go another nine. Yeah, good, because he spot. says it back tonight. It's pretty tough. Oh, great. <laughs> so good. You went back went for back. a hot dog. Yeah, we got nine more holes. Only guy I know goes back. <laughs> he was confused. <laughs> yeah. He forgot something. You again. <laughs> You know, you look at it on paper from our back tees, it's only about 6,500 yards. Um, you really need to get off to a good start. Uh, the first five holes specifically are, are pretty attackable. They're shorter in length. Um, and then once you get to number six, it doesn't stop until you get to number 18. Um, it's a placement golf course and it's a second shot golf course. So I, people always, you know, say to me, they're like, well, you know, a placement golf course, you know, wouldn't make sense. Maybe it, you know, where it might be a second shot golf course, but it is uh, in regard to, you know, you need to leave yourselves in the right places. Uh, Seth Rayner does a great job of, if you're attacking greens from the wrong angles, um, you're really gonna have no chance to get it close to certain holes out there. Uh, so, you know, avoiding the rough, keeping the fairway, placing in the right spots is the key to success. Uh, there are, you know, obviously, you know, Seth Rainer green, green complexes are not easy. Uh, and I would say that this golf course is our greens are very difficult. So again, not getting it above the hole, short siding yourself, um, all those things, you know, if you do those are going to lead to bogeys and more. 11 was a fun hole. It was a par five. It's the one and only par five on the back. And, you know, we, we got that intel from Craig before we went out. So we knew your scoring opportunities most likely are on the front nine. It's the easier side from what we were told. Um, so this was our real last chance, I think, last chance to score. Um, it was short. Ended up getting a great drive out there. And um, standing over 230 yards here. Took a three wood. So let's go for it. Let's try to get this one up. I'd love to get an eagle in this series. I don't think we've had an eagle in the series yet. It'd be cool to get one here. That's an eagle putt. Long eagle putt. Settle. Well, I didn't leave an eagle putt short. <clears throat> All right. Three putt par after being on in two. It happens, guys. It happens. Last summer, the club hired um, architect by the name of Jaeger Kovic. Um, Jaeger is a Seth Rainer expert, and we are in the process, uh, just started doing our course uh, restoration project. I don't want to give away too much information yet, but obviously it started with uh, some tree removal out on the golf course, opening up sight lines. Um, I can tell you that some of the plans that we have in place are going to be some fairway expansions, some mow line changes. Um, we're definitely going to redo some greens. We've, you know, like many golf courses in this area of the country, you know, green speeds that are in upwards of 13 to 14 on a daily basis, you know, Seth Rainer design features um, can't withstand that. So some of our greens have gotten a little bit uh, tricky and too fast in some places. So we're going to soften some of those, but uh, there's going to be some big changes coming and it's going to be super exciting for everybody here, um, our membership and, and some of the future championships that we have here at Morse County. 13 is definitely one of those holes where you pull out the phone and start taking a couple pictures. It's a beautiful tee shot. You've got fescue, that golden brown fescue rolling all the way up to the green. Behind the green, you've got the beautiful historic clubhouse that's there. Uh, so hopefully all of those sites will take a little bit of the edge of just how tricky this tee shot is away from you. And I'll tell you, I really went pin hunting here and got very lucky by the skin of my teeth that I hung on. It looks like it's gonna stay, I think. Stay is right. Hope and pray it stays. Once I got up to that green, I'll tell you, I'm looking at it. The play there is the middle of the green, especially with the back right pin like we had today, and let it roll down to that pin. Everything in that, that hole, it's called the Redan for a reason. Everything on that hole 
rolls down and to the right. So aiming for the middle of the green is the play. I certainly got lucky that mine hung on there. So the 15th hole baffles me a little bit. Uh, on the scorecard, it's, the, it's rated the easiest hole on the scorecard. It's 18 on the, paw, on the handicap, but I'm stepping up to this and it's 212 yards from where we're playing. If you're over, you're in a very tricky bunker. Uh, the one thing that I will say works for you is there's a little bit of almost a speed slot in the little fairway that's there, about 20 yards short of the green. So if you are short, you may catch that and roll right up. But man, if this is gonna be the easiest hole of the day, that tells you something about this golf course. Fortunately, I caught my tee shot a little off the toe, didn't get the distance I wanted. So now I'm staring about 20 more yards onto the screen and I'm just thinking, gonna have to really work to get this thing up and down and get a par here. What a chip. Ready? Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Let's go. I know I say this a lot in this series, but it's, it's courses like this that really stand out to me. I mean, we're playing and we're gonna be working our way through some of the top 10 and top five courses. And a lot of those courses are household names and people know them to be that. And you walk into those courses with very high expectations and expecting to have a day to remember. But it's courses like this that are sneakier. It's courses like this that are rated somewhere in you know, that 20 range in the state that you end up being so much more surprised by. You know, I come in here and I'm looking around and, and again, I say this so many times, I say, how is this not a top 10 golf course? I mean, just look at this place in every angle, everywhere you look. So it's almost nice to once in a while have your mind blown a little bit rather than coming in with high expectations and seeing how those are met. Instead, coming in with a little bit more humble expectations and just walking out with a big wow. That place was spectacular. My favorite hole is the 18th hole. Um, from the moment I played this golf course as a kid in high school golf to now being fortunate enough and privileged enough to be the head professional here, the 18th hole has always been my favorite. It's a, um, it's a wonderful short par four. Um, it's, to be honest, probably the only water penalty area that comes to play on the entire golf course. So uh, the tee shot is blind. Uh, you need to aim up the right-hand side. Any shot that is hit left, with more than probably three wood is gonna be in the water. Um, and then you leave yourself, you know, a anywhere between a pitching wedge to a seven iron into just a beautiful green, green complex where the second shot is slightly blind unless the pin is in the back and the green slopes hard left to right on the left hand side and hard right to left on the right hand side. So in some cases, I would say it's almost like a punch bowl in some places because it feeds in and it's just a beautiful setting when you come up over the horizon on 18 and you're looking down at um, the penalty area on your left at our incredible historic clubhouse on your left and then obviously into the green. It's just a great setting in my opinion to finish a round of golf. All right, I'll open it right now. Thanks. In the next episode of Inside the Gates. We're in. Step one complete. <laughs> so we pull into the facility here at Matita Conk National, and the first thing that came to my mind is big. You have 27 fantastic holes, and you also have a practice facility that's just absolutely unmatched in the area. This thing is vast. It is expansive. Looks like the size of an entire golf course on its own. Go in. Yes! <laughs> that's it. And that's how it's done here at Matitaconk.